what we want to do is build this map of the solar system. So what does that mean in the modern day and age? Well, first off, I need to be, in order to know where the asteroids are now, what I need to do is I gotta build telescopes. I need to observe an asteroid, and I need to watch it move for some period of time so I can figure out what its orbit is. And then I need to have math, and I need to understand orbital mechanics, and I can calculate the, the trajectory of that one particular asteroid. And now I re need to repeat by a million times. There's a million or so asteroids that, and I need to do this, and I need to update these things. So the first thing you need to building a really good map of the solar system is telescopes. Now this isn't that much different than how we map the surface of the Earth. You know, we had spy satellites, which became commercial satellites looking down at the Earth. And, but the original ones were built by governments. And that data was held secret and tightly held. Eventually became open and eventually became publicly available. And a couple of companies were able to take these publicly available information and make really good use of it, different than the way the CINLS and those types of folks looked at things. They built things that were usable. They built Google Earth, they built Google Maps, they built MapQuest. What we want to do is follow that same tack. We want to take data from these telescopes, and these are some interesting telescopes. The, the one up there is one called PanSARS, it's in Hawaii, it's in the, and uh, it's on the top of Maui. And uh, it is the current most powerful telescope for finding tracking asteroids on Earth. The one in the middle is one called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. It is, a, uh, it is going to be the world's largest survey telescope for finding asteroids and, and looking into the uh, formation and evolution of, of the universe. Uh, that, was, that is being built currently in Chile by the National Science Foundation for about $700 million. And uh, it becomes operational in about two and a half years. And so the, that thing there is about 50 times more powerful than this one. And so what's gonna happen here is that the publicly available data sets, remember this is paid for by the US government, is going to explode. There's gonna be an enormous number of new discoveries. Now it's not gonna find all the asteroids we wanna find, but it's gonna do a heck of a lot better than anything out there right now. So what it means is we're gonna have a lot of data. What are we going to do with it? How are we preparing to deal with this data? How do we make that map out of this data? Because really what this thing is finding is not it's not producing a map any more than Google Maps is the same as a bunch of photographs of the Earth taken by spy satellites. Somebody had to build a system that allows you to navigate around and allows you to do things like turn by turn directions, you know, place my store here, that sort of stuff. All those things are what made Google Maps useful. That's not been done for the solar system for navigating to asteroids, for calculating what if an asteroid might hit the Earth, if for laying resource claims for doing deep space navigation, all those things are gonna be services built on a map. So maps are changing from two-dimensional to four-dimensional and they're changing from static objects to services. And, and if you think about what this map is gonna be, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a, it's something that exists in computers that people can access and use and build off of.